Hello, so what we want to discuss with you today is a new treatment for a rare disease, but a rare disease that actually is life-threatening with a medium survival of three years and that we can probably now stop if we can detect early. So let's hear about it now. So this study is about X-linked adenoleucodystrophy. It's caused by mutation in the ABCD1 gene that encodes for the transporter of the very long chain fatty acids. In adult men, it presents in three forms, an adrenal insufficiency, a progressive myeloneuropathy, but very importantly, a rapidly progressive inflammatory white matter disorder that occurs in more than half of the patients and which is lethal in three years. We can propose an early treatment if we detect the lesions at the early stage with hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, which is going to replace the immune system from the brain by replacing the immune system of the body because this ABCD1 mutation is going to shift the immune cells into a pro-inflammatory status. But unfortunately, not all patients can be eligible to hematopoietic stem cell transplantation because of their age, after 50 years of age in particular, the myeloablative procedure is too toxic because of the lack of a matched donor or because of lesion of the internal capsule of the cortical spinal tract that are going to progress too quickly for the transplant to have an effect. So there is definitely a need for alternative treatment and liriglitazone is a brain penetrant a PIPO gamma agonist, a derivative from bioglitazone, which is going to have both a mitochondrial uh, pro uh, effect as well as an anti inflammatory action on the NF kappa B pathway. So, liriglitazone was tested first in the advanced study in the myelopathy form of the disease. But very importantly, the study showed that liriglitazone was having a significant effect on the conversion to cerebral adenoleucodystrophy. It was preventing the development of this inflammatory demyelination. And so the next question we asked was whether liriglitazone can slow down or even halt neuroinflammation in patients who have already developed the cerebral lesions. And for that, we enrolled patients that were either not eligible to transplant for the reason I've mentioned before, or patients that were awaiting for a donor. The study we conducted was uh, approved by the ethics committee and was also conducted uh, with a protocol for therapeutic use that was approved by the French drug agency and conducted in a very standardized manner with both clinical assessment, biological assessment, combined with a volumetric analysis as well as brain diffusion tensor imaging. So lesions of cerebral RLD as are very infiltrative lesions of white matter, as you can see here, with uh, very blurry uh, borders. So it's kind of very difficult to segment reproducibly over time. So we use the pipeline of co-registration in order to put all the sequences uh, of all visits in the same space, in order with uh, the segmentations to make the lesion borders, uh, very, uh, the modifications of lesion borders very clear. So when uh, we had the, all the segmentations uh, for each patient on each visit, we analyzed separately the corticospinal tract lesions, as you can see in yellow and blue, uh, in order to uh, uh, analyze these lesions separately. So the corticospinal tract lesions were analyzed in the internal capsules, in the cerebral peduncles, and in the cones with different levels. So what we showed in this study is that almost all patients fully stabilized clinically, as shown here on the EDSS or the AACS, which is a dedicated call, score for cerebral adrenoleucodystrophy, taking into account the cognitive aspect of the disease. Only two patients did not respond to treatment, and these patients were older than 60 years of age and also with prominent cognitive dysfunction. So this clinical stabilization was associated with radiological stabilization. As you can see here, the low score is measuring the global load of the cerebral lesion, and it was perfectly stable in those 10 patients. But very importantly, the volumetric analysis that we conducted with Marianne showed that on the cortical spinal tract lesions, we actually had not only stabilization, but decrease of the lesion load in some of the patients, 
which is remarkable given that those patients cannot be transplanted because of the rapidly progressive evolution of these lesions. So this is illustrated here. You can see this patient as baseline with cortical spinal tract involvement in the pons with gadolinium enhancement that is going to disappear after only six months of treatment with stable lesion load and even a decrease of the lesion load over two years and without recurrence of the gadolinium enhancement. So we strongly believe that this study is a very important milestone for the community of patients with adenoleucodystrophy, but very importantly for adult men with this disease. Indeed, if we can detect the lesion at an early stage, which means a close monitoring with brain MRI, we can now offer early treatment uh, for the patient with liraglitazone in order to halt this neuroinflammation. And this is a very important alternative to the transplant, for which again, many men are not eligible. But it can also be considered as a bridge therapy for patients awaiting for the transplant. Thank you very much for your attention.